Hello there everyone and welcome to Game Points episode 257, your weekly get together where we talk about recent gaming news. I'm as always your host, and Brandon joining me today is mm, David. Tonight, David, we have to ask whether or not Microsoft is gonna buy Discord. PlayStation does buy Evo, and there are yet even more Activision layoffs planned, if you can believe it. But first, I want everyone here to know that this is an audience interactive podcast. So if you're watching here live every Tuesday at 8 p.m. over at Twitch TV slash Game Points or later over at youtube.com slash gamepointspc. Feel free to join in the conversation with any questions, comments, concerns, etc. you might have. Just try to keep them germane to the topics on hand. David. Yes. What have you been up to over the weekend? What the hell did I do this weekend? I don't think it was anything interesting. (laughs) Uh, So here's the thing. I saw you playing something, and damned if I remember what it was, but I wanted to ask about it. But I did see that there's a big Warframe update coming up, and I'm sure you're excited about that. Yeah, that happened. I haven't I haven't touched it yet. We'll see. We'll see if the bug gets me. Okay. There's always that chance. Yeah, because every time a new they... patch comes out, it's 50-50. Sometimes you get it back into it for like three weeks straight, and other times you just ignore it. Yeah, it's like it's like a six month to a year thing though, and I can't remember the last time I played, so maybe okay. I'm at that window, but I, it might be too soon. Okay. Um, but I know that they've like completely redone the whole like ship combat thing, which is what got me to play last time. So we'll we'll see. I want to see how people are liking it first before I jump in. Always a prudent decision. I'm going to do things a little different than we normally do, David. For those at home, I'm going to pull back the show. Just pull back the curtain on how I run the show just a little bit. Normally, I have my notes set up. We go in that very specific order. And then it's usually designed to be like big stories up front and then the the, the fluff at the end. And usually and then we taper. At the end. Everybody loves it when we taper. Yeah. Everybody likes it when the back half of the show is worse than the front half of the show, right? That's how you got to do it. That's how that's, you got to do it. That's how you keep people <laughs> listening. <laughs> is that why we're so popular? <laughs> I'm going to do things a little bit different today because we have like buckets of stories from the three big guys, PlayStation, Microsoft, uh, Xbox, PlayStation, Microsoft, and Nintendo. Uh, no one really is more important than the other. So I'm going to ask you, David, what company would you like to tackle first? We'll go through all of them, but which one do you want to get into out the gate? Let's do them chronologically. That's not, not by help when me. the article happened from when the companies were relevant to the video game industry. Okay. So Nintendo first, I'm assuming, because yep. they were made back in like 1891. I, I mean... And their first video game console was in the 80s. Okay. All right. So Sony consoles in the 90s and the first, you get it. Right, right. I get it. So we got two stories for Nintendo. First up right here. This is via Bloomberg. Nintendo is going to use Venuda Video Graphics chip in 2021 Switch upgrade. Now, we reported last week as well that there are rumors of a new Switch coming out. Uh, 4K screen seems to be the big thing. But we got a little bit more details if... These anonymous sources are to be believed, and keep in mind that are anonymous sources. I swear sources. we've already reported on this exact rumor, though. Uh, okay. It is different because it's a little bit more detailed. Uh, yeah, but, that's fair. Yeah, uh, this will be. This is from Bloomberg, by the way. All links will be provided down in the show notes at the bottom, or over on the Discord server later. To the article. Nintendo company plans to adopt an upgraded NVIDIA Corp chip with better graphics and processing for a new Switch model planned for the year-end shopping season, according to people familiar with the matter. The new Switch iteration will support NVIDIA's Deep Learning Super Sampling, or DLSS, a name that surely will not be abused by the internet at all, a novel rendering technology that uses artificial intelligence to deliver higher fidelity graphics more efficiently. That will allow the console, which is set for an OLED display upgrade, to reproduce visuals at 4K quality when plugged into the TV. This is the part, David, that I think is important to notice, because we were talking about whether or not it's going to be real 4K or not, and we were both kind of leaning on the not real 4K, because there's just no way a Switch is going to have that. Yeah. This is confirming it, if this individual is to believe. It's to reproduce game visuals at 4K, meaning fake it. Yeah, that's cool. That's fine. A little bit more detail behind that, which is one of the reasons I'm waiting here. Back to the article. The U.S. company's new chipset will also bring a better CPU and increased memory. DLSS support will require new code to be added to the game, so it'll be primarily be used in improving graphics on upcoming titles, said the people, including multiple game developers. Bloomberg News previously reported that the new Switch is likely to include a 7-inch OLED screen from the Samsung Display Company and a couple of the consoles released with a bounty of new games. Important to note, they mentioned both NVIDIA and Samsung. Both those companies will come into play later in the uh, show. 
Yes. That's and, the biggest thing I want to talk about regarding yes. this. So, Analysis expect the new Switch to be offered at a higher price than the current model's $299, a level unchanged since the Switch's initial release in 2017. Bloomberg's intelligence's Matthew Canterman foresees an increase as much as 100 bucks. To A quote from him. 349 will increase the value proposition to the device, but I still think Nintendo can drive a strong demand even at 399 he said, end quote. There's a couple things I want to ask you, David, and I, I'm, I, so we'll get to the Samsung Activision stuff at the end of this specific story, because I think you okay. have the most to say about that. One, I know I've asked this before, but would you, does this interest you at all even at 299 I already own a Switch. You already own a Switch. You have no interest in 4K at all. Nope, I already own a Switch. No interest in a bigger any the, screen. Any of the games that I want to play on the Switch won't really look better on the new Switch. And that is going to kind of answer what my second question about the price increases, three forty nine and three ninety nine. And I think most people play their Switch the way you play the Switch. Small screen already. You don't play it on the TV, correct? No, I very rarely play it on the TV. A I four- did like when I first got it because it was kind of a novel thing. Mm-hmm. And for multiplayer games, sure. Like if we're playing Mario Kart or something, then yeah, I'll have it hooked up to the TV. But other than that, I, I, we've talked about this. I just use my Switch for like platformers and right. RPGs mostly. Mm-hmm. Now, I play mine on the TV a lot because I, I have issues with looking at handhelds these days on my neck. It just it does It is not a enjoyable situation for me. That said, even a 4K upgrade on the Switch, most games made for the Switch hardware is, are just not going to take advantage of that. Well, yeah, and the thing that's strange is that it's a 4K upscale for the television, which will make things look crisper, but it's not going to run 4K on the handheld because that would make everything too small. Like, yeah, it's it has to render the resolution where you can actually see everything. You which know means what I mean? For me. That seven-inch screen isn't going to do any good for me, though. That I can see possibly being a selling point for people who use the Switch on the go all the time. I can see a bigger screen being a big deal, but from yeah, everything, yeah, the bigger screen. Because think of it this way: the mm-hmm. Switch itself is like ninety percent screen, right? Yeah. The actual physical Switch without the Joy Cons. So that yes. means the entire unit is bigger, and the Switch already is pushing the line of being not portable i don't think the unit itself will be bigger i think they'll take the bezel around the edge and significantly shrink that i think that's how you can get seven inches out with it with a few like modifications like clever moving the buttons and so they're on the sides and the bottom and all that stuff yeah i think i think you can get away with keeping the same size of the switch while increasing it to seven inches i i just by kind of eyeballing it i think that can be done i'm not 100 certain don't quote me on that that's fair. I'm just saying, if the unit's any bigger, that would make me even less interested because already the Switch loses to both a Game Boy and like a PSP, in my opinion, and mm. then it doesn't fit in your pocket. That brings unless, me to the... Unless you're still wearing Jinko jeans, in which case they <laughs> this was made for you. That brings me to the problem that I kind of have with this Switch upgrade, this Switch Next, whatever they want to call it. The two big features are competing with each other. They're mutually exclusive. The bigger screen does not mean anything to people who only play this at home. The 4K upgrade does not mean anything to people who play this on the go. Uh, so, that while that's fair, the DLSS is a bigger deal than just 4K upscale because remember that DLSS is the only reason that anybody could play Cyberpunk at max graphics with a like suitable decent frame rate. Okay, I didn't know that. That's you're the you're the, yeah, the hardware. Yeah, DLXS so. is actually a really really big deal, okay. and the fact that AMD doesn't have it is why everyone's trying to buy the Nvidia cards so much more because they don't have an answer right now. Okay, and this this whole like super sampling deep learning thing is actually pretty rad, and it works super well in the games that support it, and it's getting people way way better frame rates than they should reasonably get. Okay, that kind of takes a bite out of my statement. That I was going to say is. That means you're only getting using half the upgrades it's coming with, but you're paying a yeah. hundred bucks more, possibly even four hundred bucks more. No, if you it, already it works bought well Switch. because if you even if you play it handheld, there's plenty of games okay. that if you're playing in handheld mode are laggy. Um, I know because I am a huge Armored Core fan. So when Damon X Machina happened, I bought that game. It's one of the few games that I bought <laughs> in recent memory, but when it's not even that recent. Um, but playing it in handheld mode, I had issues because there would be some like laggy frames every once in a while. Okay. Because there's a lot of stuff going on. It's a really fast-paced game. So. Okay. 
that just takes some of the bite of what my statement was going to be. Maybe I need to yeah. rethink about the value of this thing. See, for me, like the processor upgrades and that is far more interesting than it looking better on my TV. Okay. And of course, important to know all this is still rumor, anonymous sources, etc. But I get the feeling that yep. at least these two things are for sure. Let's take a look Biggest at deal. Hey, Nintendo, can you make the battery last longer? Because that's all we really care about. What is it like two hours at the moment? Yeah, okay. it's bad. Let's take a look at chat here. Wilson's Corner says, I'd be super happy with a bigger screen and more powerful hardware, but Nintendo has always been style over graphics, so more powerful hardware really don't do much beyond increasing frame rates. Uh, that's kind of what I was thinking, right? Because Nintendo has been more of a style over performance. That's yeah. just what they've done. Well, I mean, I'm just thinking that Mario Odyssey and Breath of the Wild both look great and run great. No, I don't need those in 4K. They look fine as they are. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like, they don't need a graphic overhaul, right. in my opinion. Uh, adding to your sloppiness in handheld mode, it sounds like the Warriors games can be a little laggy. Even Hyrule Warriors chugs for me sometimes. Also that is Wilson's the other Corner. one I was thinking of, because I've played a lot of Hyrule Warriors on Switch. All right. And that does slow down a lot in handheld mode? Mm-hmm. Okay. So, once again, I don't play in handheld mode. I'm the weird guy that plays it on his TV only. So. Also, remember that. Remember when Damon X Machia came out and they made that big hoary split pad pro? Yes. Yeah, I'm that asshole. I have that, and so when I use my Switch, I use those controllers, and they are so much better than the Joy Cons. It's like, I have, like that giant. Because I have like full sized human hands, mm -hmm. and so the little tiny Joy Cons will hurt my hands after a little while. But yeah, also, it's a hoary where... controller. Hoary's always make quality product. Yeah, and it's basically just a uh, Nintendo Pro controller cut in half. Okay. So, yeah, that uh, seems to be coming. It'll probably be announced officially in a couple months. We'll see how it shakes out. Let us know if you guys are going to buy one of these things when it comes out, whatever it's called. The Nintendo Switch Pro Plus, XL, the, the Nintendo Switch U. I wouldn't be surprised if they fucking called it. Oh, man, some some dumb crap. Something stupid. I, I, could t I, I could say pretty sure for myself I'm not interested in it, and I think that you also fall into that category, David. Yep, I guarantee it'll have a dumb name. I also can almost guarantee that it will be impossible to buy. Yes. Impossible. Because of other things that we'll get to later on. I, I want to yes. kind of come back to this story. Next Nintendo story that I have, Niantic and Nintendo team up to create a mobile application featuring Pikmin. Niantic... Okay, let's jump back like four years. Three years? Okay. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, let's give or remember, take. Do you remember the summer of Pokemon Go? Yes. And how... The funniest thing happened, in my opinion, that as Pokemon Clo blew up the entire world, Nintendo stock shot through the roof because investors are fucking stupid and saw Pokemon and assumed that Nintendo was behind it. Mm -hmm. Well, it was Niantic the whole time. And it's really funny that it's taken this long for them to actually partner up. <laughs> uh, well, uh, Nint Nintendo licensed... Yes, yes, yes. The, I'm, the I'm aware yeah. of the fact that they got license fees, but Niantic were the guys making the money. Right. This time around, it seems to be a little bit different. To the official press release, Niantic Geek and Nintendo Company Limited are partnering together to jointly develop an app that combines Niantic's real-world AR technology with Nintendo's beloved characters. The first of these two companies are developing... The first title the two companies are developing together is based off the Pikmin franchise with gameplay activities designed to encourage walking and make the activity more enjoyable. The app is scheduled to launch globally later in 2021 with Niantic as the publisher. That's kind of weird, by the way. That Niantic is publishing it, not Nintendo. Mm -hmm. The title will also be the first title created by Niantic's Tokyo Studio, Niantic's development studio established in April 2018. David, as you said, these companies have been working together for a few years now, but this is the first time I believe that they've actually developed a game together rather than licensing it or one company publishing something they're doing. Yep. Fun fact, I was an old school Ingress player back in the day, which is the thing that Niantic did before Pokemon Go. Which is just a... With, Pokemon Go, isn't it essentially reskinned Ingress? Yeah, more or less. Yeah. It's, it's like the same exact concept. Like there's these not gyms but there's like these hacking points and you have to get them for resources and you fight against other teams so instead of like fighting for pokemon you're fighting against teams of players right i mean of course they've probably is, is ingress still around or have they completely shifted to pokemon oh no Go i think they like point? reworked it and re-released it and did all this stuff okay. i used to when i used to run all the time i played a lot of ingress okay because so i would just have it on my phone and then when it buzzed i would open it up we don't know too much about what this is going to be 
But did you ever get on the Pokemon Go train? You said you played Ingress a little bit. Did you ever get on Pokemon Go? Oh, yeah, dude. I was for sure out there. I bought a battery pack for my phone. I was going like crazy, hardcore. Even my, I was into that. Like, I, that my, actually got me to go outside and desk, I hate Pokemon. My desk at work, when that game came out, was within reach of one of the, like, whatever the fancy points are that you could, like, spin every five minutes. Okay. So I would be working, and my phone would just be on my desk, and every once in a while I would just hit the button. So I was, like, level 20 when everybody was level 10, just because I was literally farming resources all day nice. with the button. I, I have really good memories about when that game came out, and I don't like Pokemon, and I don't like going outside. But I, I specifically remember one time uh, I went down to a park, and I was doing the Pokemon It was yeah, a magical Pokemon time. Thing. And a bunch, the park was crowded, right? But it, I didn't see, I didn't think twice of it. I figured I must be the only one here during the Pokemon that everyone was looking at their phones. And I just went, oh, this is what people do now. And then I hear some kids screaming, there's a blast toys over here. And I, I, I kid you not, about 80% of that park lifts <laughs> their heads up and just starts slowly walking. And it starts getting faster and faster as people realize way too many people are going over there. It was. It was one of those weird cultural phenomena, and I doubt this will hit it again because that very much was like a flash. In the, yeah, it, it was lightning in a bottle. You're not going to recapture yep. that, and I don't think this is going to recapture that either. But well, also, I'm glad to see who some gives Pikmin a shit about Pikmin. Love. No offense exactly. if Pikmin is your favorite game of all time. It does not have the numbers the Pokemon has. Not no, even it doesn't. close. Not even close. David. That does it for Nintendo Bucket. We got two more buckets also, left. Funny aside that neither of us are actually Pokemon fans, but we both play Pokemon Go. We're yeah, such that, boards. <laughs> that, that just shows how much that game, like, we just, struck. Uh, Sony or Microsoft? Sony was first, bro. Talk okay. about this. I'm, yes, but God damn it, play along. We're refreshing things for people who are listening <laughs> later. Jesus Christ. Oh, you want to yeah, lead yeah, the... Yeah. Actually, let me get the first one. I'll let you get the second one here. All right, cool. Okay. First story from the Sony pile, next generation VR PS5. Uh, we already knew that PS VR 2 is coming. We have some yep. details on it. But we don't Sony, know if that's the official name, but we do know yeah. there's a next gen VR coming. Sony actually shut off the controller to it. And it is it, a significant improvement, in my opinion. It is the stupidest looking fucking thing I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> it is Why better than a move controller. Just the PlayStation logo, or not the, the, the fucking Pepsi logo. <laughs> It, it has like an orb shape so it, it, it it's like imagine holding this and you have like the orb it looks a lot like the uh controls the jaeger pilots used to pilot the mechs in pacific rim if you were to ask me and I, I know that's such an oddly specific thing but that's what it reminded me when i saw it but it had it's like uh you hold it like this almost and there's like a ring that kind of goes around your hand uh, i don't have a good picture of it to show unfortunately but there are some details that came out about this thing why the rings uh, you can hide wires. You can hide more wires into it, and it has some tracking in there. But we'll get into that as I go through the blog post they put up here. This is on the PlayStation blog. Once again, links will be provided down below in the description. First thing you notice with our next gen VR controller's unique design, and David sure as hell did, which takes on an orb shape that allows you to hold the controller naturally while playing a high degree of freedom. There are no constraints to how you move your hands. Each VR controller includes adaptive trigger buttons that add for palatable tension when pressed, similar to what's found of a DualSense controller. So, if you've played a PlayStation 5, and uh, I know you have, but I don't know how many of you have that there. The, their, their trigger buttons have like this... They're so weird. Yeah, they have this functionality on there that actually gives resistance when you put that push down on them. And that resistance can change depending on what you're pushing. So, for example... If the, the example everyone keeps using is like a bowstring. So as you pull the bowstring back to cock it and get it ready in a video, I'm thinking you're playing Horizon, the resistance increases when you go all the way back. The the, the controller can do that to varying degrees of, of success. I've seen it in some games where it's just bad and I don't want it in there. But the pack-in PlayStation 5 game, Astrobot's Adventures or whatever that was, worked amazingly mm -hmm. in that. Yeah, no, that was definitely a cool idea. And we were wondering if that would still be used. I think we had the conversation of this is all neat tech, but how much of it is actually going to make it anywhere? And, and so I, think I like VR is like, the, the gateway this, for this that is stuff. This is the perfect place for it mm -hmm. is to have a adaptive trigger. 
Uh, additionally, each new controller have the haptic feedback optimized in its form factor. Haptic feedback is the new fancy way of saying advanced rumble functionality. Your oh, Switch yeah. controllers have it. The PlayStation 5 controller has it. Uh, so call it just a rumble feature is kind of disingenuous because it is really... It, it hasn't been a rumble tumbler in a long time. Yeah. But it is it, it is still that vibration thing. It's just very dialed in to where they can kind of manipulate and sync it up with what is happening on the game rather than just a generic vibrate with one big tumble and one little tumble. Uh, it is actually very, very cool when some oh, games put that to good use. I actually have an aside. Okay. It's it's not Sony based, I'm sorry, but I was playing uh, an Xbox game the other day. As we've mentioned, I randomly got one of the new Xboxes. And that controller, if it vibrates at maximum intensity, is way the fuck too loud. And it legitimately <laughs> pissed me off, and I turned off the video game I was playing because I couldn't hear the dialogue over how loud the controller was vibrating. Wow, that do you might I don't know if that's like a defective controller or not. I have I'd have to hear it. It was it was ridiculous. That is ridiculous. I was playing I was playing Dirt Five for that one weekend when I played it before I decided I hated that game. And it was just <laughs> vibrating way too loudly. Yeah, it was like I like, couldn't concentrate on what I was doing because the controller was just the whole time. Couple other bits of this new controller is that they're going to have it to where it you can play. Let me read the article ver verbatim, and then we can go from there. The controller can detect your fingers without pressing any of the areas where you place your thumb, index, or middle fingers. What I read into that isn't so much that you're going to get like the, you know how the, uh, what's the Valve's thing? The Vive? Index. The Index. How that has like each individual tracking. Yep. That's exactly what I was going to talk about. This does not strike me as that. This strikes more as like a, it could detect if you're open or close. So don't think you're going to have like full finger manipulation. It's well, going I mean, to be, to be fair, I that's open all this, the Index this, does this, either. This, this and that. It, 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 at the index, it works the same way. Is that it's like pressure sensitive on the pad. There's no buttons. It's just the actual pad of the controller has like zones where your fingers would naturally line up. And if your fingers on it, then that finger would be closed in your hand in the video game. Ah, okay. I thought it was a little bit more advanced than that. I have not been able to play the index yet, so I thought it was more advanced than that. I mean, that's all it is. But dude, it feels plenty of advanced. That's for sure. Okay, good to know. And then additionally, the VR controller is tracked by the new VR headset through the tracking ring across the bottom of the controller. That's why the ring is there. It's all designed for VR tracking because... Yeah, it makes sense because it's broadcasting for the headset to see it. Yes, and as opposed to the giant color ball on the end of the Move controllers. Technology I, that was old. You know, old. people hate on it, but I love the giant color ball. I like the way they look, but that technology was old when it was on the PlayStation VR unit to begin with. That's true. That, that technology was always already like six years old. Yeah, I, I liked PlayStation Move. Maybe I'm a sucker. With this ex <laughs> with this extra stuff on here, David. Yes. Do you think this opens up the door to have things like Half Life Alex on the PlayStation Five? I desperately hope so. Yeah, I mean, I I, I think I mentioned this when we talked about them supporting VR and having a new VR headset come out. I think that this is kind of leading up to that. I also think tying it back to our previous conversation, things like DLSS could be a huge get for. VR titles if it they could start be. incorporating that because, because the biggest thing with VR is it has to has to has to run at an incredibly high frame rate yes or you will get nauseous yes Just additionally period. every additionally the caveat to is everything runs at a lower resolution which is why everything looks kind of blurry in VR to a degree mm -hmm. even more so if you wear glasses and you have to take those glasses off yeah well, you just wear your glasses and the headsets. Uh, that can be uncomfortable as someone who wears glasses all the time and doesn't have contacts. Yeah, that's fair. Um, it, I don't know about the PSVR, but I know on the index, you can actually like adjust the whole contraption. You can so have you the can PlayStation VR as well, it. but the problem is, is that... So I, I'm only speaking through my experience on here. But when I pull the, VSR, the PSVR out to allow for the glasses, everything gets even blurrier because it's mm. also like the focusing mechanic as well. Gotcha. So I kind of have to put the PSVR where it focuses properly and then just deal with the discomfort from that point. Gotcha. The The index is, is interesting because, I mean, you can change like your pupillary distance and all kinds of shit. So maybe it's just like a setting somewhere that you can yeah. find. They also just make lenses that go into the headset that are your glasses prescription that you can order online. That I so didn't know. 
so you don't have to wear glasses at all. You just snap these little things in. And they also, just... keep in mind the index is a thousand bucks. This thing is going to be half that cost, right? If that, yeah. So they'll it have might be to the cut price of the new somehow. Switch. <laughs> That's true. You is this know. something that you have an interest in getting, or if you get a VR headset, was it going to be the index? Um, so for the longest time, I was interested in PlayStation VR because it was the affordable option to get into VR. And from the very first time I tried it, I thought, this is super fun. I like this technology. I think this can go places. And so I'm the guy that wants to be a VR supporter. Yep, I just never have the money to do it. And while I would love to have an index, you can't buy a graphics card to save your life right now. Yes. So the odds of me getting one of those in the next two years are just ridiculously low. Wow. So yeah, if this comes out and it's available and it's the right price, this would probably be my window into VR. Oh, wait, except I don't have a PS5, so it doesn't matter at all. So <laughs> and, uh, and believe it or not, all these stories are connected, as we'll get into later. Uh, I love the PlayStation VR, but it's such a cumbersome ass to get set up. Because you have I'm, to plug in the other thing, and you have to plug in this thing, and then you got to get the cables yeah. out. And I am hoping that this streamlines that process a bit, because I would be in VR way more if this streamlines it. Because as yeah, it, it is right to... now, the hookup setup cost is not worth the... The juice is not worth the squeeze. Yeah, I got you. One more PlayStation story, David, but this is more in your beat, so why don't you go ahead and lead us off on it. Yeah, uh, this is pretty interesting and was really unexpected. This was posted on the Sony blog as... From the article... Sony was welcoming Evo into the PlayStation family. Uh, Evo, for those that don't know, is the like the Evolution fighting game tournament that happens once a year in Vegas that did not happen last year and had all kinds of kind of shenanigans go down with uh, some of the founders. And I actually forgot about that, but yeah, that could actually be part yeah. of the story here. Yeah, maybe maybe the brand of Evo got diminished, and, and Sony's trying to bring it back. So they've teamed up with RTS to acquire Evo through a joint venture partnership with expertise spanning esports event management, brand and consumer and developer consulting, and gaming talent management, RTS is a new venture led by CEO Stuart Saw and backed by investors including Global Entertainment, sports and content company Endeavor. I don't know what any of that is. <laughs> However, Evo co-founders Tom and Tony Cannon will remain closely involved in an advisory role to ensure that Evo continues to service the fighting game community and support its vibrant growth. Evo is returning this year as Evo Online, a fully online competition taking place August 6th through 8th and the 13th through 15th. Entry will be free and players in North America, Europe, Asia, and Latin America, man, they've already announced the game list, will be able to compete in Bandai Namco Entertainment's Tekken 7, Capcom Street Fighter V Champion Edition, Warner Brothers Mortal Kombat 11 Ultimate, and Arc System Works Guilty Gear Strive in an open format. Uh, the only new game added to the list this year is Guilty Gear, and the biggest thing to note from this list is that it's missing all of Smash Brothers. Now, here's the thing about that, David. I don't think Smash Brothers being missing from this is a result of PlayStation buying Evo. I think that's just Nintendo completely pulling out of the tournament scene for Smash everywhere, because they have been on a bender the past few months, essentially shutting down any kind of tournament for it. Um, now, the trouble is, I, I, I don't have an issue really with Sony buying Evo. I hope that this means that Evo will have like better prize pools and more support and will be more open to letting different games in because it's always kind of been like a flavor of the week tournament. And seriously, for the last seven years, Smash Brothers Melee has been in it. And so like, it's just still... It so, still feels so, weird not to have it. Is that what you're saying? No, I'm saying that there's been two Smash games in fucking Evo. Oh, that Melee there was doesn't the GameCube need one, to wasn't be. it? Right. <laughs> Evo um, always felt like a a garage band kind of thing where it's it, they had like their hardcore fan base, but it never really did take off. Uh, the only reason why I even mentioned it in on this show is because of you, quite honestly, because you were a, a big guy in the fight not you, you are not big in the fighting game community but you pay oh, attention no. to start. the fighting game community stuff you I watch that stuff you can see watching fighting games dude i finally got you to sit down and watch some pro fighting one time that was cool yeah the capcom cup at the uh sony uh playstation experience that one year the first year that that was actually really cool yeah it's that was just fun. fun watching people that are really really good at those games uh, throw down is very entertaining and i'm excited that it's coming back 
I'm excited the Evo's not dead because that was kind of a concern. It certainly felt like it when uh, I don't remember exactly what now, happened. The so trouble I don't is get into details, but it was bad. That I really need all of these games to just have stellar netcode because the problem that you have with online video game tournaments, especially fighting games when frame input data is so fucking important, is that the game can go to hell in a handbasket very, very quickly when there's issues with the connection. Yes. So I know a lot of tournaments are going online. I'm going to just miss the in-person tournament, you know, even watching it via stream, because the fact that Evo always had players and they had this big giant screen and all these people watching, but the players themselves were sitting in front of two CRTVs plugged in across from each other. It's just, there was something special about that. There is. And I, I do think that stuff will come back as far as like the in-person fighting game events. I think that is going to happen. Yep. But anyway, there you go. There's your Evo happening in August. Tekken 7, Cap, uh, Street Fighter 5, Mortal Kombat 11, Guilty Gear Strive. Um, a short list. A lot of times they'll they'll get things set up by number of entries. And I kind of hope that that, that happens. And so if a ton of people sign up to play whatever obscure fighting game, that it just shows up. Mm -hmm. Also, August is still a couple months from now. There could be something that's unannounced that gets announced in the next couple months that shows up here. Yeah, but we'll see. David, there we're going to move on to the Microsoft bucket now of our three buckets. We got two stories here. First off from The Verge, Microsoft rebrands Xbox Live to the Xbox Network. Rip Xbox Live. Microsoft has rebranded Xbox Live to the Xbox Network. Instances of the new branding started to appear in the Xbox dashboard recently for beta testers, with clips being uploaded to Xbox Network instead of Xbox Live. Microsoft has now confirmed the name change. Xbox Network refers to the underlying Xbox Online service, which was updated in the Microsoft Services Agreement says a Microsoft spokesperson in a statement to The Verge. The update from Xbox Live to the Xbox Network is intended to distinguish from the underlying service from Xbox Live Gold memberships. David, I get why they're changing it, because the Xbox naming convention is very weird, especially since they have gone from Xbox Live, and then they add Xbox Live Gold, and then they drop the silver to establish the non-paid version, and then now they have Games Pass, and now it's Xbox Live Gold or Xbox Games Pass. Which one do I need? I get it's confusing. Dude, it's not just the Xbox xbox 360 xbox one the xbox stuff. one x xbox one like xbox series x xbox series s it they are bad at naming things microsoft is stupid that said you'd think they would change something else other than the xbox live itself because xbox live has been like their branded online service literally since it first rolled out yeah, that's the ridiculous part to me. Why don't you just change Xbox Live Gold to fucking Xbox Premium or something else and yeah. not ditch Xbox Live? Xbox Network is a stupid name. Yeah, they're, <laughs> they're losing. It, it's the branding that they're losing. It's brand awareness that. that they're losing. Yeah, and that's just Or it's me. by design and everyone's going to think, oh, I need to get Xbox Live so I can play online and they're excellently going to buy Xbox Live Gold because that's the only one they can find. But the main point I wanted to bring up in this bucket isn't the story. It's the second story. And the reason why I want to touch on this is because everyone is talking about it, and it means absolutely nothing. But they're framing it like it did, like it does mean something. Via Bloomberg, Microsoft said to discuss Discord bid for over $10 billion. Microsoft Corp is in talks to acquire Discord Inc., a video game chat community for more than $10 billion, according to people familiar with the matter. Discord has been talking to potential buyers and software giant Microsoft is in the running, but no deals intimate said the people who asked not to be identified. So the reason why this is driving me nuts is because I saw a myriad of headlines saying Microsoft is thinking of buying Discord. Will Discord get bought by Microsoft? I even started the show with that question. And they're all framing this in a way that makes it sound like this is a done deal. But if you continue reading the goddamn article, specifically this part right here, one person said that Discord is more likely to go public than to sell itself. So the anonymous sources that they're quoting to saying that Microsoft and Discord are in talks to sell the company for ten billion are well, saying it's more than like it's more likely that they just go private. You are you're also neglecting the fact that they had discussions with both Amazon and Epic. Yes, but and those were a company uh, that is potentially looking to go public, and people are trying to buy them. Um, however. I understand the rage because fuck Microsoft buying Discord. Uh, Coco also Fataco fuck was... Amazon buying Discord. Also <laughs> fuck Epic buying Discord. Coco for Tacos in chat says Microsoft is so stupid. I downloaded Discord for free. So I, I, I get where you're coming at there, Coco. 
but they wouldn't be <laughs> downloading they wouldn't be like charging for discord what this would be would be buying a chat infrastructure to incorporate into game pass that would I'm be what saying, this is for you had your fucking shot with skype and teams stay the fuck away from my social applications microsoft all right yeah, I don't need this to happen. What's great about Discord is that I can use it for any system at any time. I just pop it on my computer and put my headset and then go. Uh, yeah, is I'm... it Discord on Amazon servers? I think yeah, they I'm are. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it is. Yeah, I think they are. I'm not positive on that. It is what it is. What What isn't on Amazon servers? That's uh, going to be a much closer list. Microsoft? <laughs> David? Yes. Don't do that. Don't do you that? You just smile and nod. You just agree. You go, yeah, yeah, good job. No, fuck you. <laughs> Anyway, uh, I don't. I don't want this to happen. Rumor or not, I think this is bad. Uh, I don't like it. I'd rather see them go public. And even then, I don't know. I like it because it currently works. I would be. All of these potential other options lead to Discord being less user friendly and more expensive. I. It's already free. How's that more expensive? I'm. I'm just saying. Any, if any of these companies buy them or, or they go public. No matter what happens to Discord, the end result will be a slightly worse user experience and more paid features. Wilson's Corner in chat says, even if they bought it, that would just be a part of the cycle of internet VoIP services that happened to TeamSpeak, to Skype, and to whatever else was used back in my time. David, do you remember a little thing called ICQ? Yes, I do. Okay, that was proto-AIM. And if you know what AIM was, you're old. ICQ I will always remember was, ICQ. Uh, IRC, but for, you know... Mm -hmm. Less nerdy people. I will always be a fond of ICQ because ICQ used to use digits meant for your members. So, like, you wanted to dial in. Like, for example, if I wanted to call you, I'd need to know whatever your string of digit number was. Nine, eight digits long. I will always be partial ICQ because I got in so early, my digit was five numbers. Oh, fancy. The friend who introduced to me was three. <laughs> he was, like, That's 628 really or some shit like that. That's funny. Uh, uh, but yeah, uh, I, I think that I, I don't think Discord is going to get bought by Microsoft. I think they would rather just go public with it because they're saying we'd rather go public with it if these anonymous sources to be believed. But if one of these groups between Epic, Amazon, Microsoft, etc. were to buy it, I think it would be Microsoft because like I said, they are going hard on creating a platform and they're going hard on buying up a bunch of stuff to support that platform. We know they have Xbox already. They are trying to become Netflix. And they're going hard to make that happen. And one I, thing that is important is to have a decent chat communication that you can run through all of your stuff. Stuffy Twitch in chat says, didn't Microsoft learn from their flame out of Mixer? Mixer no. was dumb. Mixer was tragic. Mixer was dumb. I get what they were going for, but it just did not take off. What the fuck was wrong with off. Mixer? Mixer was great. Uh, it did need to exist. I Streaming from Mixer was as easy as pressing Windows key G and then clicking on the Mixer button. Streaming on me is easy as open up OBS and clicking start streaming. After downloading the program, reading a tutorial, and setting everything up, you dumb bitch, and you know I'm right. If you want, streaming like... on Mixer was two buttons and a left click with no training, no knowledge, just Okay, if, if, if we're going to talk about that, that's already built into like PlayStation 4 and 5, where you can literally just hit stream and it I'm takes not, you live. I'm not talking about consoles right now, bro. Who gives a shit about consoles? Nobody talks about consoles. <laughs> Twitch has that built in, is what I'm saying. And I'm not, I'm not like trying to blow job Twitch or anything like that. I know we're on Twitch right now and everything like that. Uh, but uh, I just, I get I, what you're on. saying. You know, you don't speak so ill of the dead. I'm saying I, it had it had its moments. It had a, it had a, it had a single feature that was good. So don't sell the whole. I, thing. I get I get what you're saying. I do understand it, and I think that trying to bust into that that category was smart. But when they started doing things like paying, uh, what were they pay Ninja an obscene amount to come over there and essentially $10 only stream for dollars. four months and got to go back to Twitch after walking away with all that money. I think that yep. is what fucked Mixer more than anything else. <laughs> Um, I think really the big takeaway here, though, is shout out to Discord for being worth more than all of ZeniMax. <laughs> that's really that's really what I care about. That's what I'm. Oh here my for. God, you're right. But they paid like something like two billion for ZeniMax, right? No, it was like seven. Yeah, seven billion for ZeniMax. This I think is it was ten. seven for the entirety of ZeniMax. You're right. Id, Bethesda, all all of that. Worth I didn't even less think about that. Get wrecked. 
All right. Uh, that, the main reason why I'm bringing that up is because I just hated all the headlines saying, is Microsoft going to buy this? The answer is no. There is a, there's a maxim, by the way, that everyone should learn. Whenever a headline asks a question, that answer is always no. But it's designed to make you think the answer is yes, so you click on it and read it. So, back to the rest of the news stuff. This is just miscellaneous news stories that happened over the past few weeks or so. Uh, David. Yes. Do you want to lead this one or do you want I to? Man, uh, I'll start because it's just more bummer. Let's talk about it. Um, from GameIndustry.biz, Activision Blizzard, surprise, surprise, preps for layoffs at their European offices. Um, That's right. The company that keeps is, producing record profits keeps laying fucking people as off. As is the rule, Activision Blizzard had a, uh, or a, a, what the fuck do they call that? Their their big call? Quarterly report. Their quarterly report, Earnings yeah. call. They had an earnings call not too long ago, and they're making gangbusters money again, like they are year over year. And as is the rule that we've seen the last few years is every time that happens, they lay off a bunch of people. Last week, we talked about some of their esports division and uh, maybe some of their mobile managers also getting laid off. Now we're talking about Europe offices. Activist Blitter is making preparations for its fourth round of layoffs in the last half year. Sources with knowledge of the situation told Game Industry Biz that the company is closing its publishing offices in Europe. The idea is to consolidate Activision Blizzard's European publishing functions to a hub in the UK. The cuts are said to be limited to publishing functions and will not impact development or live ops and customer support staff. They also don't impact King's offices in the UK, Sweden, Germany, or Spain. The U.S.-based Activision Blizzard has been reshaping its internal operations of late. Last October, it closed other offices in France and the Netherlands and followed up that next month with a series of planned cuts across its Asia-Pacific offices. It's just not good. Uh, I, I have said on this stream multiple times, I am not opposed to layoffs in general beyond the fact that they suck because I get that a company has to do layoffs every now and then. There are sometimes people are redundant. Sometimes you do have to make cuts. I get that. But Activision specifically seems to be so aggressive in this shit. And it's they stretch it out. They stretch it out over a couple years at this point. We keep reporting on more and more active layoffs at Activision. The the cloud of knowing that you could just be let go at any time has to be piss poor for morale. And to top it all fucking off, Bobby Kotick, who's the CEO of Activision is straight up one of the most overvalued fucking CEOs yeah. in planet dude, Earth. They're laying, down, they're laying off all these people, and he's getting like a $200 million bonus. And we've talked about this at length before, and I know I get a little, you know, mad just because I'm an ass, but he gets paid a ridiculous amount of money, and not just for a CEO, but based on the amount of value he brings to the company, the dude makes too much. Yeah, flat out. Like Not, on paper, he is getting paid more than he is worth. Yes, I've got no problem with the CEO fleecing the company for as much as he thinks he's worth. I do, but we're different people, and that's fine. That we said, can talk about that we can both agree the fact that Bobby, Co <laughs> yes, <laughs> Bobby Kotick, however, is fucking overpriced for what he does. Yes. Fuck Bobby Kotick. One hundred percent. That's not just my opinion. That's like the the general opinion of Wall Street. It's him and. Uh, Who's the guy that's running EA right now? I can't remember his name off the top of my head. But both of them are like number one and number two of the high, most overrated, A Andrew overpaid. C Andrew Wilson uh, are the most overpaid CEOs in in the world right now, and that's according to multiple like financial sector they, uh, reports. Neither one of these two people are are fucking worth the paycheck they're getting, and they keep Activision particularly keeps doing these layoffs, and that's just goddamn annoying it's just frustrating to see let's take a look at chat here real quick uh coco Fataco says i think they're preparing for more layoffs too i'm laying on that yes you are late on that there coco uh in 2019 blizzard layoff around 800 people early 2019 and early 2020 the game publishing giant also closed down one of its offices in france and netherlands and last week i think it was or the week before we reported them shutting down between 50 to 150 jobs based in the esports sector as well as like king industries i think got smacked around yeah, it was. Uh, was it King or was it Glue or I don't it was know, King. one of their it was one, King. one of their mobile things? It was. It was King got hit really hard. Okay. So I I'm really getting tired of of uh, this Activision shit. And like I said, I I preface this saying I get that layoffs need to happen, but 
something about <laughs> the 200 gift card thing dare not be true by the way thank you for linking to that wilson's corner uh something about bobby Kotick is unpalatable to me and that fucker needs to get replaced yeah because he is he is not worth the money they're paying him David, uh, last week we talked about how later that week they're going to have a Square Enix Presents, kind of their version of Direct. We more or less mm-hmm. said don't expect any Final Fantasy news or anything like that. It's going to focus more on their American stuff. And it did come out, and we have some updates to give you. Yes, First we up, do. Project Athea. That was the working title of the game by Luminous Athea. Productions. Athea. Project, Regardless, project dumbass name that Square called it was the working title for the game by Luminous Productions for the PlayStation 5 and PC. It is now officially called Forspoken. Did you see this trailer? Dude, I did. And the beginning of the trailer, I was like, okay, all right. Um, I don't really know. Is it, what kind of game is this? And then it shows like the fucking movement later. And I'm like, oh my God, I want to play this video game. Yeah, the this movement looks, looks amazing. I don't, know, I don't know what's going on. I know at the beginning of the trailer, she's hiding from a dragon. And I'm thinking, okay, is it like a, it's kind of like a dark adventure game. I and got then it strong this, like, Horizon Zero Dawn vibes like, from it. Like dashing. And fuck, I, I just want to. This looks yeah. cool. This don't, looks really cool. Don't know much about it. They did a little we trailer really where they had the actress who was playing the main character in it speaking about it. I got Horizon Zero Dawn vibes from it, which isn't a bad thing. I love that game. It's one of the few mm-hmm. games I've platinumed. But like you were saying, the traversal in this game looks goddamn amazing. It looks like something that Insomniac would have done. And Insomniac has made... They, they, uh, for example, they did the new Spider-Man game. They did Infamous. Both great games that are just... Both games that are great just to get from one corner of the map to the other on and this seems to be going up that alley. also um i think it's important to note that one of the uh leads on the writing team for this game is gary witta who co-wrote rogue one yeah i know gary witta i may or may not have appeared on a show that he frequently appears on there you go uh anyway. I, I did not know he was writing this though good to know yes uh yeah he did rogue one and uh, book of eli Mm-hmm. And, and is, that, that is a pretty damn good resume. Rumored to be doing the last Starfighter reboot. Oh my god, really? I think I think that got put on indefinite hold. But the, Dude, the I know we're the only two on people that. in the world that are excited about that. But oh, damn, it's gonna am be I excited yeah, about that? I am too. <laughs> Other stuff that was announced on the Square Enix Presents thing was that Black Panther is going to be in Marvel's Anthem. Uh, Life is Strange True Colors <laughs> coming out September 10th, 2021. Uh, that's the next Life is Strange. By the way, important note that this is going to be released at the same time. They are abandoning their episodic content, uh, normal release. Right. Life is Strange Remastered Collection coming fall 2021, if you want to catch up with that game I feel comes like out. all those games just came out, but all right. I am not a Life is Strange fan, but more power to if you are. It just does not touch me at all. They showed off a bunch of Outriders gameplay. Uh, David, the more I see about this game, the more I want to play it. Thank you. That's what I've been saying. I feel like no one was watching what I was watching. Yeah. I, I think Outriders looks a lot of fun. Um, we've talked about this a little bit. I am a Game Pass whore, and I'm super excited for the first because I'm going to play this game. Right. I, I, I am actually looking forward to playing that. So I might have to get Game Pass, and we can see if we can't knock it out over a weekend or something. Tomb Raider Definite, Definitive... I'm sorry. Tomb Raider Definitive Survival Trilogy officially announced. This was what was rumored to be happening. We more or less said this was probably going to happen on the last show. It's been confirmed. It'll be Tomb Raider, Rise of Tomb Raider, Shadow of Tomb Raider all together in one bundle. Dude. An amazing set of games, by the way. You're skipping the important part. This this whole thing happened during the Tomb Raider like 35th anniversary or whatever the hell it was. <laughs> 25th, I don't know. Um, and they're adding Laura Croft to Fortnite. I that, that's not on the notes for a reason, David. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, just have to say, why is it that 90s franchises are like we're celebrating a big milestone birthday? We're in Fortnite. Fortnite. Why Yay. is that the thing? How did we get here? Because everything has to be in Fortnite. Fucking Aliens was in Fortnite recently. Man. Anyway. Just Just Cause and Hitman are having more mobile games. There's some weird... Dude, Hitman Go was fun. Hitman Go was Although, fun. This isn't Hitman Go, though. I'm just saying. Uh, there's, there's potential. Some weird AR Space Invaders thing. I really wasn't too sure what the hell I was looking at when I saw this, but hey, more power to them. Balin Wonderland showed off a trailer, and I finally figured out why this game is talked about so much. It's because it's being designed by the guy who made the original Sonic the Hedgehog. But it's so, a 3D platformer? Yes. And um, last I checked, Sonic was only good when it was in 2D. That is very true. Don't get me wrong. So, mm, worried. And then finally, and I have to have you refresh my memory on this, David. 
Yes. Darius Cosmic Revelation, a collection that features G Darius HD and Darius Burst, another Chronicle EX coming out later this year. Darius is a shmup on the lines of like Gradius, R Type, and what was that game that had the gall to charge 60 bucks for two separate collections? Was that a Darius game as well as that R Type? No, um, I think it was neither. Fuck, what was it? We just talked about it. They had a remastered collection. Like three or four weeks ago, we talked about it. I like the franchise, but I'm not spending 120 bucks to get 12 old games on it. Was it Darius? I think it, it was might Darius. have been the old Darius games. But seeing that they're releasing a, if that's the case, this is a third collection, and you know it's going to be 60 bucks. I just have a, I, I, I refuse to believe that Darius has the gall to charge 180 bucks for their back catalog. Like, I refuse to believe that. So I'm convinced those shmups were some other franchise. But I'm not positive. Mm, I need to find a price. David, while you're looking that up, I am going to go ahead and read the Darius next story. Darius Cosmic here. Collection Arcade, $44.99. It was Darius. Mm-hmm. $90 for all the games. Oh, it's about to be another 44 something with this one coming out. Fuckers. God damn it, I hate that so much. Although Darius quick, is not worth that cost. Quick shout out to chat. Uh, Wilson Scorner asked if we have any thoughts on how they could salvage Avengers. No. Just no? No. What you do is you have to give the game both content and make it enjoyable to play. Yes. Which reminds me, I remember what I was going to ask you about. I caught you playing Fallout 76 recently. Yes. <laughs> Which would be kind of along all those lines. That's what we were going to talk about. I did start playing Fallout 76 randomly. Okay, so here's the thing. I've had a copy of Fallout 76 like this whole time. Yeah, same here. It was on the stupid Bethesda store. And I once I got I, my hard drive died and I got a new one, I had zero reason to download the Bethesda store. Because one, that game was shit and was so buggy and broken that it was unplayable for me. I promptly deleted it, stopped playing it. And that sucked because I'd always wanted a multiplayer Bethesda game. There's something cool about the premise, but it was not like, activated. I just properly. wanted that. I wanna I wanna wander around in, you know the Skyrim or the Wasteland or whatever and just have friends and just do nothing but, you know, fight bad guys and loot caves and whatever the hell you do in those games just with friends. That seems fun to me, but that game was so busted and bad. I was on my Steam the other day and it was just randomly in my library. I don't know how. I don't know why, but somehow I have a copy of Fallout 76 on Steam. I didn't buy it. I didn't link my Bethesda and my Steam accounts. I've done nothing, but I just had it. So I was like, that's weird. Didn't they say they made this game better? So hell yeah, I reinstalled it. I went to the beginning. The first thing that happens when you go outside the vault at the very beginning of the game is you meet people. It's 100% better than it ever was. <laughs> Will you keep playing it? I might. Okay. We'll see. Uh, I'll give it the uh, the good old level 30 try. Yeah, re report back to me on how that game is done, because I wanted to like Fallout 76 real bad, and it was just, well, real bad. I mean, it's it, it feels like more Fallout. There's there's people you can talk to. There's quests. I went into a bar that was getting harassed, and she asked me to go help her out. So I went to find the bandits that were roughing her up, and I brutally murdered them, and I left a sign that said, leave this bar alone. Nice. And that was pretty satisfying. Appreciate that. I like that idea. Yeah. We got two more stories that I want to get through. Uh, I'll take this first one, and I'll let you have the second. First story. Embracer Group is raising over $890 million for even more acquisitions via GameIndustry.biz. Embracer uh, Group, by the way, those are that's essentially what THQ Nordic is. Yes. Is gearing up for yet more acquisitions as it stands to raise more than $890 million. Uh, they're going to be doing that by issuing more shares, by the way. Mm -hmm. This will be used to, quote, further strengthen the company's financial position and of, of course, continue its ongoing acquisition strategy, end quote. It's at the point where even the people working for the company openly acknowledge all they do is buy old peas. And I have to ask, one of my predictions this year was that Embracer Group is going to acquire too much and become overextended. They're going to have to do a fire sell on some of the IPs they bought. I don't know if I'm going to make that because we could keep buying more shit. Yeah. And it's can't working for them. Stacking them. <laughs> it's it's fucking working for them, and that's what's blowing my mind. They have to, dude. Just a just a subtle reminder that if you had all in on Embracer Group stock like three years ago, 
you would be doing better than if you had all in on GameStop in January. Yes, that's very true. That is a true fact because this shit went up like 17 thousand percent or some shit over three years and it wasn't a short squeeze either it's actually still just kind of hanging up there yep uh i i don't understand how embracer group is still in business considering they keep buying shit but they're producing so little i know they keep saying they have all this stuff in development and the only answer i have is they're literally buying all this stuff for it like a song we talked about how like i could have afforded the free space ip for example yes but they just bought like Gearbox, and that was not like a, that was not chump right? change. I'm almost thinking we should pull our change and buy some obscure old game studio licenses, and then just sit on them and hope that Embracer Group calls us. Yeah, I want to buy Knox. <laughs> I want to buy Arcanum of, of Steamworks of Magic of Scura. Uh, I I don't, I don't get this. Also, I get kind of twitchy when a company sells off more shares to raise money. Because if they had the the money that they should have for being valued so high, shouldn't they just be able to buy Switch? I don't know. Just something but about... But then you're getting into weird businesses. I'm that... starting to get more and more worried about Embracer Group as, as a company. Mm-hmm. Not necessarily because I want my prediction to come true. But the more I start seeing about stuff like this, the more uh, allegedly I am not giving financial advice. I am not accusing Embracer Group of any proprietary. It feels like this is the one thing they have going for them, and they have to keep it going until suddenly it catches I up. I just want to believe because they've already bought a bunch of games from my childhood that I want to see come back in some way, shape, or form. So Same I just here. have to hold out hope that it works for them and that I get to see those games again. I, I just, I just have no idea what their the, the strategy here is, other than just to buy everything for as cheap as they can and keep doing it. Dude, Titan Quest got an game. expansion like eleven years later. Yeah, I mean, it could happen. Uh, Stuffy Twitchy well, in chat says... Them. There, there's a reason. <laughs> Stuffy Twitchy in chat says, It's working for them now, but there'll be some reckoning post-pandemic when game discovered life beyond a slate of pixels again. This was my ga- this Maybe. was my life before the pandemic, and it will continue yeah. to be my life post pandemic. I, I don't I don't think it's I don't think gaming is going to drop off a clip just because the pandemic is ending. I think there might be a bit of a problem though when nothing comes out this year because the pandemic delayed everything until 2020. Yes. There is going to be a very... We had a very dry spring compared to the past few springs. It is going to be a drier summer, and it is going to be an absolute barren-ass August to October. Yep. When you compare to previous years. Normally, we'd be really excited for fall releases right now. Name a video game coming out in the fall. Uh, Exactly. Horizon. That there are, I'm not saying there aren't games coming. You'll have a new Call of Duty. I'm saying if I did, if I had asked you that like two years ago, I can name know, off like on, five or ten on of March twentieth. Then you would have rattled off like five games without blinking. I would normally be playing three or four different major new releases right now because March was the time. It was essentially yeah, Christmas. March two. Was we the were new calling it Christmas spot. two for a while. There is yeah. nothing out right now, and that is what's going to eventually start eating to the bottom lines here very very soon. Uh, David, we have one more story here. I'm going to hand this one to you because it kind of ties into a general theme of just scarcity of every single electronic device that we've been touching on yep. through the Nintendo, Sony, and Microsoft And this could stuff. actually influence uh, Stealthy Twitchy's prediction, who mentioned that uh, you know there could be a reckoning post-pandemic for video games. Yeah, we'll see. This could also be one of the driving factors. The global chip shortage has reached crisis point as ps5 xbox series x remain difficult to find in a story from GameSpot. Uh, now the story does focus on ps5 and xbox series x but we would be remiss to not mention the graphics card shortage that's also affected by this um but going on to the article getting oh, a it's, ps5 let's let's get even more into it while we're brought that up it's not just graphics cards oh yeah it's, it's cell phones it laptops, cars everything. computers Everything that has any kind of electronic in it is being hammered by this fucking thing. Dude, yeah. It's uh, it's tough. Um, anyway, from the article, getting a PS5 or Xbox Series S slash X remains a difficult task thanks to a widespread shortage in semiconductors, but the chip scarcity is now reaching crisis levels, impar- impacting industries from car to console production. According to The Guardian, the shortage has been steadily worsening since the last year. Maribod Media and tech analyst Neil Campling told the publication that the shortage is likely to worsen because the supply can't keep up with the demand. 
Microsoft and Sony have said the supplies issues could last until the second half of this year. Even Apple and semiconductor manufacturer Samsung are feeling the squeeze. This shortage extends to graphics cards, which are experiencing a supply and demand issue of their own. The NVIDIA 30 series GPUs, for instance, have been hard to come by, so the company brought back its older cars to deal with the shortage. Now, that is what the article mentions on this, but that barely touches the surface of how yeah. bad the shortage is. And the easiest way to look at that is to just check the median prices for all of the items that I just mentioned on eBay over the last eight months. So fun fact is I was looking some of this stuff up and PS5 prices and Xbox Series X prices on average on eBay at the end of last year were going for like 1.2 to 1.3 over uh, MSRP price. Fast forward to now, it's closer to 2x the price. The NVIDIA graphics cards are now hitting 3x the price. If you bought a card at scalper prices in November, you could flip it now at a profit. I got one better for you. My Seriously. I, I the, bought... Go ahead. I was going to say, so the crazy thing to me is that it's both the 3080 cards that have the biggest markup and the 3060. Like the entry level card is now the price of a 3090. You could, There are people spending $1,500 for what would be often considered the budget-friendly graphics card. I bought my GTX 1080 back in 2017 when they first came out i could rip that card out of my computer having played it for four years and sell it used for about 300 dollars more than i paid for it brand new it is a problem it is a serious issue yes. um if if radeon or if amd had somehow managed to make a ridiculous number of graphics cards when they launched the 6700 xt they could have won the graphics card war just based on availability. Yes, the, the the company that is going to be able to flood the market with this is going to win. Uh, so you have NVIDIA. For, NVIDIA is highly sought by crypto miners. Right now they are stuffed with Twitch. I've heard that NVIDIA is going to start the, putting uh, limiters in. But they're the, also the going to create... The 36 limiter was cracked almost immediately. And they yeah. released a, a developer firmware patch on accident that unreleased the limiter. Which and is something they probably I was going to but it, it immediately got copied and obviously it's everywhere, so that doesn't matter. But I've also read that the 6800 series Radeon cards are actually performing a little better at Ethereum mining than the uh, equitable. That is NVIDIA also card. true. Uh, the main thing I want to bring up though is that the video was in talks, or at least they mentioned, I can't remember if they're doing it or not, uh, but they're going to release a actual mining card. Which seems like they could have just done that in the first place. Yeah, it, I mean, it takes businesses move slow. It takes a while sometimes, but uh, except there for are, this happened the last time, there are not many companies that actually make semiconductors. True, it's a very small field. I'm surprised how tiny it is. Uh, this is one of those problems that they say is going to be lasting for another two years. That I do kind of find hard to believe. I think that you're going to have someone go, "Okay, there's a market for this. We can make a lot of money. Fill the fucking market." But that is just my opinion on it. Don't take that as financial advice. I'm just but saying, don't, uh, this is all leading towards my prediction coming true. This is going. What was your prediction specifically? That we would hear about the next line of NVIDIA cards before, before I was able uh, to yeah. comfortably buy one. I do remember that now. Yeah, this is this this semiconductor squeeze is going to be happening, regardless of, uh, of who decides to hop in or not, for at least another eighteen months, at least. It is going to get worse before it gets better. Uh, let's see. Chat's saying, NVIDIA should be charged a carbon tax given the con contribution their cards are making toward environmental impacts. No. Mining is fucking everything up. Mining is it, nowhere so, near as bad as it's being reported as, but I don't want to get into it on this show. I'm just saying. Full disclosure, I do mine Ethereum like on the side with my one thing. It's like a tiny little thing. But uh, it is not... I don't want to get into it, but I, I disagree with you on that, and I'll leave it there. Uh, we do have some delays because it is uh, the the year of the Murder Hornet Part 2, and everything's getting delayed out of this year. Uh, Gotham Knights, the upcoming four-player co-op Batman game set in the, uh, not Arkham Universe. This is the one made by, not Rocksteady, but the other guy that made that the Arkham other one. Origins. This is the one made by Bebop? Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> 
That took a minute for me to click. Uh, Gotham Ice delayed until 2022. No reason given, but I'm pretty sure we can all figure it out. Yep. We also have up another upcoming event this week. The ID at Xbox Indie Showcase on March 26. Uh, they will be debuting new trailers and gameplay for more than 25 games, including Second Instinction, The Ascent, Wild at Heart, Void Train, XO1, and an update on Stalker 2, a game that I forgot was coming out, but I am now excited for again. That will be broadcast on Twitch Friday, March 26 at 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. David. Yes. I love me some indie games. I'm really looking forward to Stalker 2, despite the first one being kind of eh, despite the fact that so many people... That game specifically, people have rose-colored glasses for. It was a cool idea. I want to see it refined. It's going to be forever before that game comes out, though, because it's been in development... I don't want to say hell, but it's been in development for years. It's going to be in development for years longer. What can I play to keep myself entertained between now and when I get to learn that that game's not coming out till 2025? <laughs> Well, there's a few things coming out this week. Uh, most of them you won't play, but we'll talk about them anyway. Uh, Overcooked, all you can eat hits Xbox One, PS4, Switch, PC. This is the like remastered re-release of the Overcooked games. So Overcooked is a like four-player co-op, but has local and online where you're cooking. People like it. These games seem fun. I've never played them. This is the four. They're fun. I have played game. Overcooked. They are chaos and they are chaos on a screen, and they can get extremely nuts. There you go. Uh, Sanity of Morris hits PS4, Xbox One, PC, and Mac. This is a psychological horror adventure game. I've finally found the tag that I think will apply to these kinds of games so that I don't have to describe them. This is a first-person horror flashlight game. That sums it up perfectly, actually. What do you think? Does that work, right? Yeah. No, I'm into it. The, the flashlight just gives you that right, oh, okay, I, I know what kind of game that is. Uh, Arkham Horror Mother's Embrace. It's PS4, Xbox One, Switch, and PC. This is a Lovecraft RPG set in the cult universe of HP Lovecraft. Oh, look at that. It's an investigation served with turd-based concat, and it's partnered with Fantasy Flight. So it actually is using a lot of the Arkham Horror assets and uh, characters from the universe. So there you go, if you want a Arkham Horror-based exploration game. Paradise Lost. It's PS4, Xbox One, and PC. This is a underground exploration walking sim sent in winter 1980. Uh, you're playing as a kid named Sismon. Sis Simon? I don't know how to say it. It's a boy raised in a. Uh, yeah, I'm not good at that. A boy raised in a post-apocalyptic wasteland finds an abandoned Nazi bunker. Will he find what he's looking for? Uh, it basically looks like you're running around talking to a disembodied robot voice. I'm going to try to play this this week. It's right up my alley. It's an alternate history where the uh, Germans were able to make World War II go into like 1960. And when they finally started to lose and get pushed back into the country, they essentially nuked the entire border. Mm. and kind of isolated themselves. So I, I'm intrigued by the premise, and I'm going to try to play this this week, but no promises on that just yet. All right. There's a game called Clea 2, which is a sequel to a game called Clea that I've never heard of for Xbox One, PC, and Switch. This is a survival horror anime protagonist adventure game. Never heard of it. Never seen it. But it's a sequel to a 2019 game that is said to be a jump-scare-free skill-based survival horror. So... Let me pause you real quick. Did you confirm that there was a Clea 1? In your To your credit, I did not. Okay. But it specifically said it's a sequel to the 2019 adventure, okay. which leads me to believe that there's a Clea 1. Do you know why I bring that up? Because there's so many of these fucking games that don't have, like... The one that the I can think of specifically was a puzzle game called Luxor. There's Luxor 2, and everyone's like, Where, where's Luxor 1? Well, it doesn't exist, because some marketing asshole realized that sequels sell more than originals. Yeah, anyway. Um, Black Legend hits the PlayStations, the Xboxes, Switch, and PC. This is a third-person strategy RPG, um, mixing tactical combat and the art of 17th century alchemy, uh, where you're liberating a doomed city from a bloodthirsty cult inspired by the great alchemist Mephisto. This... Looks pretty cool. I like turn-based strategy RPGs. I think there should be more of them, and this is one of them. So I'm going to try to get a copy of this as well and see if I can't stream it as well. I'm in talks to get that. We'll see. Sweet, sweet. Starbase Startopia is a fantastically named video game coming out for the PlayStations, Xbox, PC. This is a sim strategy base building game as a mix of economic simulation and empire building strategy paired with classic RTS skirmishes and a good dose of humor. Um, I'll probably 
I'll probably play that. Yeah, I want to play it too. Uh, Apparently, this is a (laughs) reboot of a game that's actually been out for a while, but I've just never heard about it. But I had a couple people in stream mention this to me, and I want to take a look at it. There you go. K is in a wild mess. It's PS4, Xbox One, Switch, and PC. This is an indie puzzle platformer inspired by 90s classics. Take a look if that strikes your fancy. It takes two hits PS5, PS4, Xbox, the other Xbox, the other Xbox, the other Xbox, and the other Xbox, and PC. (laughs) Split screen action adventure game. Invite a friend to join uh, with F. Oh, you can play multiplayer for free with Friends Pass. That's the thing with this game. Okay, very nice. Look at that. Um, this is the uh, game that's, I believe, the game made by Jose Ferris. That's the guy that made, like, The Way Out. He's the one that famously said, fuck the Oscars on the Video Game Awards that one year. Oh, yeah. Uh, the that Keelys. Um, Balen Wonderworld is that other game we mentioned earlier on the show. Hits the PlayStations, the Xboxes, Switch, PC. This is a casual puzzle platformer by the guy that made Sonic. I keep thinking I call this Balen Wonderland, but it's Balen Wonderworld. It is Wonderworld. Yeah. Uh, speaking of Wonder Worlds, Willy's Wonder World, great movie. I loved it. Oh, the, yeah, Nick Cage versus Five Nights at Freddy's. I haven't seen yet, but I'm... I finally sat down and watched it. Doesn't he only if... say like ten lines that entire movie? He doesn't say a fucking word. It's the best <laughs> movie ever made. <laughs> if you are expecting a serious horror movie, you're an idiot. If you're expecting <laughs> Nick Cage to fully Nick Cage against a bunch of animatronic puppets, it is the best movie you've ever seen. That is what I'm expecting, and that is kind of what I'm craving. Oh, man, it's great. Um, anyway, Failing Wonder World, people are excited about it, but watching the trailers and gameplay, I have no idea why. Take your own look. It's- I, I think it's I think it's because it is reminiscent of Nights. Do you remember that Dreamcast? I think it was Dreamcast, the Nights into Dreams. I remember not playing it. Okay. It, it seems reminiscent of that with its art style. There you go. Uh, finally, Genesis Noir has Xbox One, Switch, PC, Mac. This is a noir exploration story-rich uh, adventure game. Uh, spanning t- space and time. Anyway, take a look. It's an adventure Very game. It's noir based. Cool. People might like it. It's really late. The show's gone long. Yeah, uh, David, <laughs> that does it for new releases, which means that does it for the show as well. This has been Game Points episode 257. And if you like what you saw here for some god unknown reason, and you want to support the stream, there's a myriad of ways you can do so. Likes, follows, notifications turned on, subs, all that good stuff. Uh, Feel free to leave a comment down below if you want to participate in the conversation later on, or you can join us live every Tuesday at 8 p.m. Pacific Standard Time right here at TwitchTV slash GamePoints. Like so many of you did, Wilson's Corner, Stealthy Twitchy, Coco for Tacos, BVS, I think I saw you in there, and everyone else who happens to be floating around in chat. Thank you all for showing up there's a discord link you can join if you want to be part of the greater game Boys community link provided down below with all the stories as well i'll be back tomorrow at 1 p.m pacific standard time at this very channel to stream something who the hell knows what maybe paradise lost maybe black legend maybe something old i don't know Probably we'll find out then until next time though this has been game points stay safe take care and we'll be seeing you